Okay, so there was a recent tournament at the 20-sided store in Brooklyn, New York. They have these on the first Sunday of every month. Uh, it's a really fun, casual place uh, to have a Netrunner tournament. Good crowd always shows up. Uh, the prize pool is really good. It just costs five dollars to uh, enter, and they take all of the entry fees and turn them into store credit and give that store credit to the top place uh, finishers. So it's sort of like, you know, if every if ten people show up, it's fifty bucks. They basically give away fifty dollars worth of store merchandise. So to them, they profit because they basically just guaranteed that they sold fifty dollars worth of, you know, games. Um, the store has also recently been renovated or is still undergoing renovations, but it has a lot more space now, a lot more tables, so it's much more comfortable to, uh, to play there. So I'm going to have a lot of games uh, from this tournament. I played four rounds, two games each. Uh, only one of the rounds I did not record because my opponent wanted to keep his decks a secret. He was upset when I posted... Uh, the other game, and he's like, you're giving away my secrets, man, even though he agreed to record that one. But, you know, if someone says you don't want me to record, I don't record. That's that's how it is, right? You don't want to be a jerk. So you're going to see me playing uh, these two decks uh, in all the games. I'm on the right with Wayland. Uh, slightly different from the Wayland I've been playing recently. I tried to change it up. I'm also playing the Wizard deck, which is also very slightly modified. Uh, on the left, my opponent's playing Gabriel Santiago. Oh, Gabriel. So, here's the opening draw. Uh, I see three ice in my hand and a June bug, so we're keeping that probably. A little mandatory draw. Install, install, credit, because there's no hedge fund. Let's see what happens. Usually when I see a runner put their hand on the table uh, at, before the first turn, it tells me they're going to spend their first turn running and face-checking. Right? Like, they don't need those cards. Put them down. It's face-check time. And am I correct? Well, he plays his Desperado before he face-checks, right? And he does. It's Ice Wall. Bonk! Best first turn ice. Bonk! Ice wall! Two ice wall! What a draw. What a lucky draw is that. Look how much I get to save all that money. Didn't even need the hedge fund. Of course, you know, if he puts down a corroder, he's in easy. But, uh, you know, for now, doing pretty good. If I was him, I would special order a corroder right away. Well, maybe. It would really help a lot out with the, uh, the Desperado already on the table. Okay, so I block up archives early, play a beanstalk, because I'm waiting for that sneak door, right? You know it's coming. Uh, if I see Gabe, if I see a criminal on the other side of the table, um, I pretty much just block up archives. You know, I'm not going to put a super strong ice there, but if I have an ice, I'll put it down. Something to surprise him. Just a little, you know, preemptive sneak door prevention. I've lost a lot of games where uh, someone just plays a sneak door on a turn, runs HQ three times, gets an agenda, you know, that's, you don't want to do that. Don't have anything else to do right now. Get started on that. We need some more money before we can build a remote server anyway. Oh. Okay, so I think he inside job HQ right there. I can't really see his trash in the in the in the video. Yeah, he inside jobbed HQ. Uh, he ended up profiting because it cost him two, and he got three. He saw one card. So even more beanstalk. So it's money time. I can probably afford to build that remote, and maybe I should. Keep, I keep my money in nice rows of five, so it's very easy for everyone to see how much I have. I uh, just take some more. Hmm, is there a reason I'm taking all this money? Oh, is that... God, okay, see, the ice in my hand is just a chum. See? Oh, no, there's an archer. Okay, so I have a chum and an archer, so I can't build a remote with that. Right? I guess I could try to bluff a remote with that. Not the worst idea. Um, 
But yeah, I think I'm waiting for a hostile takeover or some kind of other ice. Oh, and there's a fairy. So he's prepared for me too. I'm prepared for his sneak door. He's prepared for my archer with his fairy. Uh, I don't mind if he uses a fairy to kill an archer and get through once, as long as it's not on a remote where he takes an agenda, uh, which it very well could be. Uh, I'm more worried that he uses the fairy plus Crescentus to take an archer and de-res it. So as long as there's no Crescentus, I'm not too worried about the fairy. And what I kind of was thinking at this point was, I have to trick him into running a remote. Uh, there's my hostile takeover. Yes. I have to trick him into running a remote uh, that has an archer on it that I can res with that hostile takeover using his fairy uh, and then not having an agenda back there. I have to get him to run the remote that has an archer with his fairy when there's no agenda in the way. And then he'll lose his fairy and then I can put an agenda in. And uh, fairy won't be there anymore. And I'll have to get it back somehow. You know, force him to use these resources. Uh, you know, being a criminal, he doesn't have a lot of you know permanent rig like a shaper, right? He's he's got you know, these things he uses up. So I make him waste his early game and not score a lot of points. Uh, then I can power in the late game. Oh, there's a plascrete. So uh, scorch is looking less likely every day. All right, now we're building our remote. Uh, thanks to our hostile takeover. That's probably Archer Friend. I see a nice Scorch in my hand. So install. And what now? He's got money. With that Armitage, he's got a fairy, so he can get through. Once. Maybe I have to get him to run with the posted bounty or something. Oh, install again. And take the credit that I just used for the ice install back. Okay. My remote is ready. Gotta make him use that fairy. So I can score behind my archer. Okay, he draws. draws again. Man, he must not have a special order or a croder or anything, because, I mean, my central's there. Ooh, a second fairy. Dang it. So now i got to make him run through the archer twice in order to uh, score agendas behind it safely. Well, I mean, really, if I had another barrier at this point, I could have scored something behind it, but I guess I didn't have one. Yeah, if I had a... If that was a barrier in front of that archer, I think it's a chum. If that was a barrier... Uh, like a wall of static, then the archer. I would have felt real good trying to push something through right now, even a government contract. Okay, so install advance, advance. Operation, make him get rid of fairy. Let's see, I think that's in. Oh, he uh, infiltrated it, and it is a posted bounty. All right, so the good thing about posted bounty is if he doesn't take it, I can score it uh, and use it to res another archer, or even just take the point. All right, so he runs as a chum. See, now here's the thing. He's going to let that chum happen if the next one was like an ice wall <laughs> and not that. He's, he's sure it's Archer, right? And he's correct to assume that. It's not a, it's not a dumb move, right? But if the next... Oh, see, look, he, he jacked out, right? See, because if that wasn't an Archer, there was a chance. If that was an ice wall, I mean, or a wall of static, he would have taken big net damage and ended the run. So I advanced my posted bounty to three. So now it's in kill position, but I would need uh, three scorches to kill him off. As, and he's keeping it. I'm asking him all the time how many cards are in his hand. He has five. So unless I have three scorches in my hand, if I did have three scorches in my hand, I would win in the next turn. But I don't. So that's how that works. Uh, there's the corroder. So now we've got to protect the centrals. Centrals need big time protecting. He's probably going to just run HQ, run R&D. He's got money from his Armitage. He's got a bad pub from a hostile takeover. It's not to look so good. Right? But I get my posted bounty. Alright, so there's the Corroder. So actually, even in this case, if he lets the chum happen and the next ice is Enigma. 
All right, there he goes. Running HQ to, to load up on his Gabe credits. And he gets Grim. Ooh. Runs R&D. Oh, no, he doesn't. All right. I guess the kill isn't going to happen with this posted bounty. Right? And I can't really use my remote for something else. Uh, and I didn't succeed in Operation Make Him Use Fairy. Oh, that's right. I have to protect the centrals now because he's got that corroded. So there I go, protecting the centrals. And I still got tons of money. Big W. Cash money. And the posted bounty's still there haunting him. All right, data sucker. One, two, three, four, memory out of five. Runs R&D. Thinking about it. Thinking about it. Thinking about it. Archer on R&D. There we go. And he's going to ferry that for sure. But now I do not have any way to res the archer on the remote. So if he ran it now, he could just take that posted bounty, and I couldn't even res uh, the one behind the chum. So he gets an R D, gets his data sucker token, and oh man, two points! Lucky dude. That always seems to happen to me. These people they run R and D like once, and that one run. Up, oh, yep, it's an agenda for sure. I guess maybe I don't notice when I do it. I don't know. That's Netrunner. So really, you know, in this situation, we're both doing pretty equally. Okay, so I'm going to score my posted bounty uh, and just keep it because I do have another... Yeah, I need that for the archer back there. Here we go. Install. Advance, advance. Okay, so that's a June bug, I think. Uh, and really, this is all part of Operation Make Him Lose Fairies. Right? I don't think that'll kill him. Um, but that's okay. I don't really need to kill him with the June bug. I just need to make him run that remote. Yep. Uh, oh, he forged activation orders, uh, my archer. So I gladly resed it. Yeah, if you forge activation order something behind a chum, that is a good forged activation orders because if they can't res it, if that was like a Hadrian's or something, or if they don't want to, um, then that you know that server is now empty. But it was an archer. I scored my posted bounty the turn earlier. If he had forged it, uh, just a, you know with a different timing before I scored that posted bounty, like if I ran. When he ran R&D and I res the archer, his next click could have been to forge that, and I would have had to trash it. That would have sucked. Okay, so he's going to run. Oh, he's falling for it. Yeah, he's spending six credits uh, with his fairy. Well, five in a bad pub, I think. Uh, to break the bumped up chummed archer. And, oh, Jukebug! Oh, yeah. Both fairies gone, and all his cards are gone. I think I saw an inside job in there. Oh, yeah. Hostile takeover. It's not about hostile takeover. I mean, it's great. You draw it, you play it, you get five credits. Uh, as long as you have two on the table already, right? If you have less than two, it sucks. But you get five net credits. You score a point. You can res another archer. Um... The only thing I don't like about it is that if you draw it, if I draw it, I feel like I have to score it, right? If I let that sit in my hand and it gets taken away, it's like, shit. That, that's the worst. I can't even risk, you know, putting it in any sort of vulnerable position. So, like, I draw one, I can't do what I wanted to do on my turn now. Like, I have a plan for the turn. I'll draw, hostile takeover. Well, there goes my plan for the turn. Now my plan for the turn is score hostile takeover. All right, so he's getting a bunch of money and another hostile takeover. This is crazy lucky. 
This is the luckiest draw in the universe. Uh, who scores all three hostile takeovers? If you think about it, if I hadn't rezzed the archers, then, well, he would have still have fairies, right? It, it's, you know, you can't say. But basically, there was only one run in which he could have taken an agenda, which was the run in which he was running the posted bounty. So if I had... Uh, I could have rezzed just one archer, and not two, theoretically speaking, uh, and had three points now. But that's okay. Now his, yeah, one Armitage done, new Armitage coming in. It's like he's got a magnum opus. Only he's only had to pay two and two clicks for it. So, you know, it's big money. Armitage is a core set card, but, you know, people are sort of ignoring it in favor of other economic options. But it is nothing to sneeze at. I guess we're discussing something. Yeah, I guess I, I'm sorry about the video. I can't really see what events he's playing, which is sort of important <laughs> against a criminal. I think he might have inside jobbed HQ again, and I didn't res, so he just inside jobbed over the ice wall. Yeah, I let him in because I didn't have anything. Yeah, I guess he needed, if he wanted to get into HQ there, he had to inside job because if that front ice was a sentry or a code gate, it would have hurt him real bad. Right, so I think he's just running HQ now. Oh, no, he forged activation orders that. Uh, so I threw it away. It might have been Grim. I don't think I wanted to give him another bad pub. Oh, he's parasiting the archer. No. No. He doesn't need no fairy. He'll just kill those archers right off the table. Well, shit. Well, shit. Okay. So I'm going to install advance advance. I don't think there's any way he can get in that server right now. Uh, does he really have three fairies in the deck? I mean, what's he going to do? Special order, ninja, install, run on the last click. Oh, he parasited my other archer. And he has five memories, so he can do it. Oh, this is so bad. Now I'm like in a rush. I have to score and make use of the archers. I have to either A, score agendas behind them before he can do anything about it. Which I'm doing right now. There's an atlas with two counters. Yeah. Atlas with two counters. But there's no hostile takeovers left to go get. I have, <laughs> I have four points, but I can't go... Even if I... Well, four points isn't enough, right? But there's no hostile takeovers to get with those. There's only scorches to get with those. Um, and my archers are going down. So I can either score... Right. I can either score agendas behind them before they die. I can clear virus counters and then try to sc score behind them. But even then, he could still break in and try to steal those agendas. Or... Um, I don't know what else I can do. <laughs> score. I have to score behind them before they die. And he has Data Sucker, so he could he could hit the Archer and kill it off uh, with his Data Sucker tokens if he has enough of them. Okay, so mandatory draw. What am I going to do about this situation with these? Uh... All right, so I'm using an Atlas counter. Watch this. I use the Atlas counter, and I go and get the only government contracts in my deck. I have four points. He knows if I score that, I will have seven, and I will win this game. But my archer will be down to... I'll have two virus counters on the parasite. Right? Because watch this. I'm going to install advance advance. Right. Okay. And it is the government contracts I'm putting down. Install advance advance. But 
That could be it, right? Someone used an Atlas counter to get a government contract saying, look at this, I dare you, I'm going to win the game right now. Right? So what did I res over there? On archives? Oh, I think it was a third ice wall. Possibly. No, or it might have been a caduceus or a shadow. I can't even see it from here. Oh, uh, that's not good. Whatever it is, it's keeping him from... Oh, no, he did, he did get in. I think it was a shadow. Yeah, it was a Grim that I threw away uh, and did not res on HQ. So the Archer is currently effectively strength 6, right? Because the Chum is going to give it plus 2 to counter the minus 2 from the Parasite. So really, if he doesn't run and take the government contracts right now, I win... But you know, right? he's, he's looking to get, he needs to get six data sucker uh, tokens, and he's only got three. It's not going to be enough. If he has an inside job, he could do it, right? If he has an inside, basically I was thinking, well, if he has an inside job, he could run archives twice, uh, and then inside job my remote. And that would give him four data suckers against Archer's strength four, because the chum got inside job. Install another data sucker. Is he going to run archives again? Yeah, I don't think he can get in the remote, or at least he's, he's not going to go for it. Yeah, he could have installed that data sucker first, then run archives twice. And that would have get, brought him up to... That would have brought him... He could have done it. If he would have installed that data sucker first, then run archives twice, and then run the remote, he could have gotten that government contract. Right? Install, run, run, run. Yeah, it's a tough call here, right? I mean, that that he doesn't know that's a government contract, even though I just showed him to him, right? I could have easily, you know gotten one with uh, the Atlas counter and then put some trap there uh, to go for the, the kill. Oh, he run archives again. Yeah, that is a shadow. That's why I got two credits on that run. Uh, and I, I think I left it at trace two. Yep, he ran archives again. He's only got, I think, five data suckers, which is one short. Well, you know, the thing is, if that, um, I was going to run R&D, I think, right? Because he can actually kill the archer on R&D. And he does. Oh, it's so depressing. Uh. All right, and he uses Corroder, a oh, bad pub on the Corroder to break the, and he gets Data Suckers back. And he's can't get more than three points. I know that. He can't get more than two points. Oh, it's a melange. He trashes it. And now he finds out that, yes, indeed, mandatory draw government contracts. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Good win. Good game. Wow. It's always good to see a game where, you know, both uh, players, like, sort of get their machine going, right? I was able to score hostiles, crazily lucky, actually, uh, and res two archers and score agendas behind them. He was able to build his little criminal rig. Uh, good time was had by all.